We sailed on the cheapest cruise out there. It's like 99 bucks a person. Sometimes you can get it for free. It's insane. And that company just got a whole new ship and they're adding to the fun. And that's what's next. So this is it. This is a ship. This is the Margaritaville at sea paradise. But you can see everything in one of our videos that we've created because we sailed on this girl. And whether you think it's the greatest cruise ever or just a booze cruise, it's just inexpensive. So the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, the very first ship they had was built in 1991. Originally it was built for Costa Cruise Lines and it was named Classica. It's bounced around a lot since that time in 1991, and now it has become the Margaritaville Paradise. And you get to sail out of West Palm Beach, Florida. You sail over to Bahamas, spend the day there, and then that night you sail back, and the next morning you are back. You can leave on a Friday, come back on a Sunday, you can leave on a Monday, come back on a Wednesday. It's a really quick trip. As a bonus on Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, you can actually go out to the Bahamas and maybe stay two nights and then take the next cruise back because it pretty much comes back and forth every other day. On the ship you can buy like for a hundred bucks you can get 10 drinks or you can just buy drink by drink. There is some free food included with it, your buffets and your hamburger joints and stuff like that. There is also one paid restaurant on the ship. Now, if you're in love with Margaritaville at sea and you love you some Jimmy Buffett and you go to the restaurants or you go to some of the all-inclusive resorts, they're just adding to the family and company. I have seen a ton of videos on the YouTube talking about how much of a disaster this ship is and how horrible it is. And you could listen to all the naysayers online, but I promise you that half the videos out there about the Margaritaville at sea start off with this could be the cheapest, worst cruise line of all time. And then by the time they get to the end of the cruise, they're kind of like, well, it's not that half bad. I'm not saying I would want to go on that cruise ship forever, but for a two night party, ah, it was pretty cool. Now I will agree that it's a really old ship. There is some rust spots. It is not set up the best. They kind of put it together and they kind of piecemealed it some, but it's still a decent room. It's clean. Most things work on this ship and you get to where you're going and you get back. And if you have a group of friends, that may be an awesome bachelor party. I don't know, you could do a million things. If you go back to 20 years ago, cruising versus now, ginormous difference. And if you didn't know this back then, most ships didn't have a ton of balconies like they do today. Back in the 90s and the 80s and the 70s, there were not many balconies except for the suites. You did have porthole windows, but that was about it. It was really funny when we first saw the first ship because they added balconies later by welding them onto the side of the ship. It, it, it looked a little janky, but if you want to know more about that, check out some of those videos on the Paradise Margarita Villa at Sea. Because now I just found out that they have gotten a second ship, the Margarita Villa at Sea Islander. The new ship, the Islander, was built in 2000. It was the Costa Atlantica. Which, by the way, if you didn't know, Costa is a European brand, but owned by Carnival Cruise Lines. So real quick, we'll compare the new ship to the old ship. The Paradise Cruise ship is from 1991, and it's approximately 52,000 gross tons. And the Islander, it's about 85,000 gross tons, where you can look at the icon of the sea, the brand new world's largest, which is like 280,000. But nevertheless, 80,000 is not a small ship. It holds about 1,300 passengers compared to maybe 2,100 passengers of the Islander. It's about 720 feet long versus 960 feet long in the Islander. I guess size matters in ships sometimes. I don't know, I guess. You tell me. <laughs> and dude, seriously, they are running so many specials on this second ship. And make sure you check if you're a teacher or a first responder or military or anything like that. They have all kinds of discounts for them people too. I really want to do the second ship. It's out there. But I also want to cruise on every ship. So over the last few weeks, a whole lot more information has been coming out. They apparently bought this ship from Carnival back in 2019 when the company was first coming out. But with the whole uh, COVID and all that fun jazz, it kind of got slowed down. But now they finally finished it. And in the summer of 2024, they are going to be sailing out of Tampa, Florida. And they're starting at $419 for one of these itineraries. First, a four day, which is gonna leave out of Tampa Bay, go straight down to Cozumel, you'll have a full day at sea, play around in Cozumel for a day, a full day at sea, and back to Tampa. That is five days, four nights, there you go. 
On your five night, which is the second option for you, you're going to leave out of Tampa, go down to Key West, Florida the next day, then a day at sea, then Cozumel, then a day at sea, and right back to Tampa Bay. And if you're looking for a little more exotic than going down to Key West, you can also go Tampa to Progreso, Mexico, and then to Cozumel, and then back to Tampa. So that's a third itinerary. And then the fourth itinerary will bring you to Progreso, if you don't like Cozumel, and then Key West and Tampa. So kind of the same locations, but just different setups for every unique person. And maybe you've been to Cozumel already once, so this time you want to go to Progreso, and, or maybe the opposite way around. Nevertheless, you always know more options, the better. This ship is a little bit larger and it's going to have a lot more balconies, a lot more room choices. On the Islander, you're going to have your interior rooms, of course. You have partial ocean views, which means there may be something out your window, but you can still see the ocean somewhat. Picturesque ocean views where you'll have a clear shot to the ocean. Partial view balconies, so some of your balconies might be blocked by other things on the outside of the ship. Full view balconies and called breezy balcony staterooms. They're even gonna have some extended balconies on this cruise ship, so that's an option for you if you need that big balcony. Then they jump into the crazy premium balconies. Even on the back of the ship, they're gonna have some cabins facing the back where you can have wake view balcony rooms. And then of course, there's gonna be three or four options on suites and very premium stuff if you wanna check those out. But nevertheless, I don't care about cabins too much on cruise ships because I've been in interior solos, balconies. You know, to me, it's the cruise and not the room. The room is where you go to sleep and rest. The ship and the destinations is where the party's at. And then some of the new things on this ship is gonna be a three-story bar right by the pool. There's a tiki bar and pool right next to each other that's adults only. That's great. You don't have to bring kids on all your cruises. And then I don't know what it's gonna look like, but there's supposed to be a 14 story atrium on this thing. If Margaritaville keeps pushing and keeps updating these ships, while nothing is ever perfect when you're just starting to build a new company, what Margaritaville does at their all inclusives or even their restaurants is pretty amazing and pretty good. I've always had a good time at any of them. I don't think this is gonna be any different. Not to say there's not any snags and not to say that everything is perfect, but even on the greatest cruise ships and even on the icon that just came out, I guarantee you not everything's gonna be perfect for every single person. So if you're just a happy-go-lucky guy and looking for a cool cruise to go on and just maybe bring a bunch of friends with you and just have a hell of a weekend or five or six days, this may be the perfect option for you. And if you have been on either one of these, let me know in the comment section below what you thought of them. Because any cruise detour is a good detour and the only way to know if you're gonna have a good time on one of these is to actually book it and go and that's how you find out what's next